This is a demonstration of a writhing thread tourniquet. Uh, it's going to be driven by this little pager motor at the top, a uh, seven millimeter pager motor. Uh, hanging below the motor, um, a doubled length of uh, fire line, high performance um, fishing line. And the weight is uh, a C cell, about uh, 75 grams or so of weight at the bottom. The circuit is going to send pulses to the motor, 12 volt, 12 volt pulses, about 25 times a minute once it gets started. Now at the beginning it starts winding itself up and then it starts building up uh, toroids along the length. If you probably can't see the doubling of the diameter. It's getting thicker. And it eventually reaches an equilibrium where when it lets it out it's still uh, highly toroidal. But <laughs> when it pulls up uh, it's going through all kinds of a mess. You can if you can tell there's um, uh, plectinum uh, instabilities forming uh, up near the motor when it contracts. Um, so it's it's happily pulling uh, about 30 times its weight. Uh, I think I'll just let it run for a while uh, and see what happens. This is about 10 minutes later, and I think it's behaving pretty much the same way. Um, the stroke is, is around 50%, and you can see as it gets towards the top of the stroke, it's really, uh, really raggedy with uh, plectinemes. Um, and you, you can hear them hitting the paper that's about a centimeter behind the thread. Um, but it's just happily contracting away. Um, the um, Fitting up here on the shaft is a uh, heat shrunk of uh, vinyl plastic with a hole drilled through that the, uh, the loop of thread um, passes through. And uh, it's, it's heat shrunk on a form that's smaller than the shaft and then, then uh, friction fit on the shaft. And uh, the motor is hanging from a little uh, wire harness. Um, again, uh, it's a bit of heat shrink tubing that was formed on um, a smaller form than the diameter of the motor. And there's a little bit of wire soldered to the battery, which is just serving as a, as a weight in this case. And the, the knot in the loop um, is located right under that, that little loop of wire on the battery, if it's still where I put it. check back a little bit later. This is now about an hour into the test, about uh, 1500 contractions, and it's settled into a very consistent pattern. From the original 11 inches, it now relaxes to about four and a half inches of length, and the contractions are not quite as regular, but pretty close to 50% each time it goes up. Um, it dances around a little bit. Uh, the battery has a card taped to it to keep it from spinning. Uh, the card hits the board behind and, and prevents the battery from spinning and, and releasing the twist. Well, we'll give it some more time. Okay, it's been about a hundred minutes since the test started and it's really behaving pretty much the same way. I had tried the same demonstration last night at the Dorkbot DC talk, and it failed after about 10-15 uh, minutes. Uh, evidence suggesting that perhaps the knot in the loop of thread had given out. And the only thing different today is that instead of taking the doubled length of fishing line and tying an overhand knot, I tied a double overhand knot. And it's, it seems likely that that was the problem, and that's why it, it has run for uh, 10 times longer uh, this morning. 
Now, uh, I'm going to have to quit at this point, but there's one more thing to try, and that is to try a little longer pulse and see how far the contraction will go. And I'm going to do that by uh, just disconnecting the timing resistor in the circuit. So it basically tries to stay on forever. Like that. Very nice. I'm going to disconnect it before it hurts the motor. Even with that last little bit of work, the motor is just barely warm. It really wasn't working hard at all to uh, to do 2,500 uh, pull-ups with that big battery.